Hi, Erica. What is chromatin? Hi, Karen. Uh, thanks uh, for asking. Very interesting question. Uh, many people will have heard of DNA, but maybe not of chromatin. Um, so each cell in our body is um, containing about two meters of linear DNA, which looks a bit like this. It's very thin, but it's very long. And um, this DNA will be divided in about sort of little segments, in fact, 30,000. 30,000 of them, um, which represent our genes. And genes define who we are, how we work, and of course, malfunctioning of genes. And in fact, um, not um, a misactivation of genes can lead to a number of diseases and cancer. Now, um, there's a very sort of big problem here. We need to uh, be able to fit uh, about two meters of DNA inside a nucleus of a cell. And a nucleus of a cell has a diameter of about five microns. So there's an amazing compactation that needs to be going on in order to put this DNA inside our cells. Um, and uh, cells use a very clever trick, so just sort of the spool trick. So they just wrap the DNA around a complex of proteins known as histones, which look a bit like sort of round spools, essentially. And by doing this, they achieve a compactation of about 20,000 times. And of course, there's not only one histone, um, and there's going to be a collection of them. So this is pretty much what chromatin looks like in our body, yes. So why is this important? Well. As all type of storage sort of spaces, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages if you want. Um, so if a gene needs to be activated because it's required in a certain moment in time, of course you will need to take that little piece of string and find that bit inside the string which encodes for that gene. And if it's in this state, it's going to be difficult to find it. So there's a problem. On the other hand, there might be an advantage to this chromatin because um, not every gene has to be active at the same place at the same time. Um, so for example, in our brain, um, there are a number of genes which are brain specific and they will not be necessary, for example, in a liver where other genes are important and brain genes are for example, not very important. In fact, they might be deleterious to be expressed in the brain. So there's a constant need for the chromatin to be open and closed. Um, and this is a very important mechanism. There's a whole new layer of complexity in our genetic code, um, which has been named the epigenetic code. It's a code that sits on top of our genetic code and regulates further our genetic code. So is that what we would call regulating chromatin? That's it. Exactly, yes. Chromatin regulation. Why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Well, chromatin uh, compactation is achieved by a number of um, factors, and one of them is chromatin remodeling ATPases, which is my line of research. Um, so chromatin remodeling ATPases essentially do the, the work of opening and closing the chromatin. And as you might imagine, because of their fundamental role, in the working of our genes, they are very much essential. And malfunctioning of these um, proteins are um, the main cause of lethality in, embryo in embryos, um, and they lead, in case of mutation in these proteins, to a number of diseases and cancers. So there's a huge drive at the moment to uh, put money into epigenetics and chromatin modeling research in the hope that we might translate into that into important um, therapeutical um, avenues. Is that how you feel your research will fit into translational medicine within this department? So my research some, somehow complements what is done in the department. There's a lot of expertise in genetics, so my work on epigenetics and chromatin modeling is a sort of complement. Um, specifically, there's a number of lines in my research which um, which uh, translate directly into some um, translational medicine. Um, and uh, that could be, for example, one of my um, interests is in the proteins, the chromatin remodeling ATPases, which are important for the regulation of blood development, so red cells, white cells. And uh, we all know that misregulation in this gene process of uh, blood differentiation is important for leukemia. So I'm looking into how chromatin remodeling ATPases are important for initiation of leukemia, for example. There's a number of congenital heart diseases which now, it appears, could be caused by malfunction of chromatin remodeling ATPases. So I'm hopeful that some of the insights from my research might translate into the future in some um, therapeutical avenues, yes. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Karen.